Then please, Master Diviner, witness my destiny. you were expecting. I can't believe it. But the Matrix of Prescience cannot be wrong. Kafka has nothing to do with Estelaron, but you... It's you. Ha! Absurd! I'd never have thought it. Ask her yourself. Take as long as you wish. I must report this to the General immediately. Please excuse me. Mm. You go ask her. I know you still have many questions for Kafka yourself. changed a bit. I'm sorry you have to see me in such a sorry state. Really? Well, that's good. I wouldn't want to affect your image of me. I didn't talk to you on the train because I knew you and I would get to talk alone here. Worth waiting for, don't you think? You seem to have a lot to ask me. Elio said he foresaw three questions, but they would be the same in essence. If I were to hear one of them, I would then tell you the objective of this trip in all its detail. Since you asked one of the three questions, it means everything is going smoothly. Are you ready to hear my answer? Sienjo's Stellaron problem is not directly linked to us. But if you look at it from Elio's perspective, you can't say the Stellaron hunters are completely innocent. We foresaw all this long ago, but chose to remain indifferent until the time was right for us to get involved. Diviner Fu was surprised because she discovered three truths. One, the Stellaron Hunters are not enemies of the Sienjo. You know this now, though you refuse to believe it. Two, someone else brought the Stellaron into the Sienjo and activated it. A result of both internal unrest and external aggression. Traitors on the Lafu and enemies from outside want to overthrow the Sienjo. The Master Diviner is in a hurry to find the General, presumably to inform him of this fact. However, that's all the Master Diviner knows, because Elio withheld key pieces of information from me. He foresaw the Divination Commission using the Matrix of Prescience against me. To guard against setbacks, he ensured that I knew only what he wanted the Sienjo Alliance to know in this moment. As for number three, even in their wildest dreams, the Sienjo Alliance could never have guessed it. <laughs> if the Stellaron Hunters aren't the cause of all this, then why are Blady and I even here? We're here for you. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? It's no wonder Fushen doesn't believe it either. 
But the matrix of prescience doesn't lie. The answer is just that bizarre. The Stellaron hunters appearing here, Blady getting arrested, me being lured to the matrix of prescience. It was all to bring you, the Astral Express crew, to the Cienjo. In the future that Elio chose, the power of the hunt is indispensable. And that's why the Astral Express crew had to come to the La Fu and achieve something important for the Cienjo. You had to establish a connection with the Alliance. And that's why I had to trick you into coming here. <laughs> I needed you to meet the Lafu's general in person and to help him resolve the Stellaron crisis. I needed the Alliance to owe you a favor. That way, in the future, at the most critical moment, the Cienjo will offer you their help. What do you think? Surprised? The notorious Stellaron hunters did all that just to make you a hero of the Cienjo? <laughs> Quite the plot twist, don't you think? <sighs> like I said, Elio withheld key pieces of information from me. The future holds endless possibilities. Knowing the right thing at the wrong time could spoil all our hard work. There is only one thing I can tell you about the future. In the best and the worst cases, you will eventually have to face Nanook the Destruction. And when that time comes, you will need all the help you can get. It will be a brutal struggle of Ionic proportions. Proportions that neither you, nor I, nor the Astral Express will ever be able to reach. In the vast majority of futures, that's when destiny ends. But, if we follow Elio's plan, there may be a glimmer of hope on the horizon. You know, even eons can be killed. Locha, hey, you didn't finish telling us about the propagation. Keep going, it's interesting. So, neons can die, huh? Weird. I thought they were invincible. <laughs> there is no true invincibility or immortality in the world. Such exaggerations are born of the perspectives of ordinary beings. Nonetheless, Ordinary beings could not have orchestrated the fall of the propagation. That Eon was slain at the hands of another Eon. I don't understand. They're all Eons. Why do they want to fight? You... Are you really from the Xianzhou? Other Eons aside, surely you must know the story of Lan and Yaosha. Isn't destroying the Eon Yausha the Alliance's cherished aim? Of course I know. Well, I, I know a little. My mom made me pr In that case, let's just change the- Fine. Oh, this one? The deceased? Yes, indeed. This is just part of my job. I was asked to deliver this coffin to the Xianzhou. Ah, uh, I'd quite forgot- Nope. The Cloud Knights spend a lot of time on the battlefield. Death is the Foxians, and as for the Vidyad, my mom calls the Vidyadara Long Scions. When I was young, she told me stories of- What do you know? Silent but deadly speaks. Your mother is right. The Vidyadara are Long Scions. 
They are descendants of the Eon of Permanence. That was why some, but not all, could turn into dragons. The power was a rare inheritance, passed down only to those who could successfully complete numerous rites and challenges. For the inheritor, it was hard to say whether it was a blessing or a curse. Ah, I've heard the story of Long the Per- But for some reason, the- Every life has its limit. Even the eons are not truly immortal, and will eventually reach the- Uh, let me ask you one more question. <laughs> A friend? No. So, uh, the sweetheart? <laughs> oh, miss, let's leave it at that, shall we? 